What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So as you can see, I have finally entered my battle rifle arc where I finally decided to call it quits on sissy boy rifles chambered in sissy boy cartridges such as AR-15s chambered in 5.56 as well as AKs chambered in 5.45 as well as the fake big boy cartridge 762 by 39. Now all those cartridges I just listed off are classified as varmint cartridges. They're not meant for killing anything serious. You might be able to get away with killing you know, a rabbit or a groundhog, varmints. But I needed something with a little bit more oomph and stopping power due to the threats that I'm constantly facing out in my woods here. All sorts of ancient horrors. You know, I got skinwalkers out here. I got Wendigos out here, but a buddy of mine who's also a North Carolina resident, Risky Krisky, he has his own issues in his woods, including Dogman as well as Nephilim. Now, after watching his channel, I saw that he had one of these rifles right here. This is an Adams Arms P2308. And you know, if it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. So I decided to get one for myself, thanks to my buddies over at Adams Arms. They're big homies of the channel. They provided a rifle for me in the past. They're 556 piston gun because this rifle is a piston 308 rifle. So they decided to send one for me to outfit me for my hunting expedition that I'm going to be doing here soon with Risky Krisky and it's going to be almost like a modern rendition of a Hunt Showdown. Now since this rifle is chambered in a proper big boy cartridge 308 aka 308 this thing's going to have an easier time taking down those um, threats that might not be of this world. So. Another thing that really um, appealed to me when it came to 308 com compared to some other cartridges out there is 308 is incredibly easy to find. I can go to my local gun store, Walmart, wherever, and most likely I'll be able to find this cartridge. Now, when I got this rifle, I decided to immediately deck it out as well as give it a sick paint job because that's what I do to pretty much all of my rifles. And kind of the mindset behind this is whenever I get a rifle, I pretty much treat all of my guns as like, fighting rifles or fighting weapons. So I kind of went at this with a mindset of like, if I was issued this rifle and given the attachments that I have, how would I set up a battle rifle? And to be quite honest, this is the first battle rifle I've ever owned. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over kind of my mindset behind how I set up this rifle as well as some of the gear that I chose for this. And hopefully, you know, in the near future, when I do go on that hunting expedition with old Risky Krisky, I can compare how I set my rifle up with his, but in today's video, we're just gonna go over this one. All right, guys, so to start things off, I wanna clarify one thing before getting into this video. I am not a battle rifle expert in, by any means. Um, this is actually the first 308 battle rifle or battle rifle in general that I've ever owned. But I have experience in other weapons. Of course, when I was in the Army, I was trained a lot on the M4. That was my primary weapon, as well as different machine guns, grenade launchers, and stuff like that. And of course, when I got out of the Army and started this YouTube channel, I started shooting AKs a lot. I love AKs. They're one of my favorite guns, and I largely consider myself to be an AK guy. Even though that community is one of the most autistic communities I've ever had to deal with, 
minus air softers. Air softers definitely take the crown on that, even though the air softers that I largely deal with are like the Rust 4 Russian Larbert type, so they're also kind of AK guys because they like the real guns too, so life sell. With that all being said, let's get into how I set this rifle up. Again, I never owned any type of 308 or battle rifles before, so all the attachments on here are things that I've had in the past on other guns, so none of this stuff was specifically bought for this rifle. I just set it up how I thought would um, make for a good battle rifle in the configuration that I want. So this is all based off of my own personal preferences. So if you have a different way you'd set up a battle rifle, put it down in the comments. I'm interested in learning this stuff because uh, I'm fairly new to it. So let's get into it. All right guys, so starting off here at the muzzle, as you can see, it has an A2 flash hider. Uh, it's not the best muzzle device out there, but it's definitely not the worst. And this is the muzzle device that comes with the rifle. I'm not too mad about it. And of course, if you want to change this out, you can totally do that. I fully plan on changing, swapping this thing out for something that will accept a suppressor. I'm still working on that right now, but that is my plans for this rifle in the future. As you can see, this rifle has a 16 inch barrel. This is the 16 inch variant of their 308 guns. And a lot of people kind of argue about how effective 308 is out of a 16 inch barrel. I think it's fine, especially for the purposes that I'm putting this rifle through as just a standard infantryman style battle rifle. And one interesting thing about this rifle, it has a short stroke gas piston. So it's very different than any type of DI style AR-10 guns out there. And I think it really lends to kind of the feel of this thing being a rugged battle rifle in some type of way. I, some, for whatever reason, AR-15s to me, uh, don't always give off the rugged battle rifle appearance to me. Uh, a lot of them just kind of give off DMR, you know, your SR-25 and stuff like that. I wouldn't feel comfortable or I don't feel like it would be in place for a EOTech to be sitting on top of an SR-25 um, and that looking right. Versus this gun, I feel like I could just throw an EOTech on this thing and it would look just right. So something about this rifle gives off a rugged battle rifle feel to me and I like it for that. Now, another cool thing about this gas piston is it is completely adjustable, which is cool if you're shooting suppressed so you're not getting as much gas back and it's not gonna make the gun as violent. But another cool thing about it is you can adjust it based off of the ammo that you're using, which is what I had to do when I was first firing this rifle and zeroing it because I'm using this ammo right here, which is provided by my buddies over at True Shot Ammo. So big thank you to them. They sent me this really Gucci, like, weird uh, Euro hunting ammo, which it's kind of funny about this stuff. It's like lead free and instead of lead, it has tin inside of it. And if you go on their website and research about it, the lady on there is kind of describing how tin is actually good for the human body. So if you're shooting an animal with this bullet it is like low key good for you. I thought it was kind of funny, but I don't think that they intended for this ammo to be mag dumped out of a battle rifle into steel targets as well as trash by an autist like me. But uh, when I first started firing this rifle, I had to adjust the gas piston on here because on the lowest setting, it was not cycling these rounds. But I started adjusting the gas piston one by one, seeing if it would uh, cycle the ammo until I got to the setting right above the middle setting. It started cycling perfectly fine. The middle setting was cycling it, but I was having some issues where it wasn't reliably locking back on the last round, but it is what it is. Now moving back to the handguard here, as you can see, it has a full length Picatinny rail at the 12 o'clock position, which I'm a big fan of. And you have M-Lock at the three o'clock, the six o'clock, as well as the nine o'clock position. So you don't have M-Lock all over the handguard and it really allows for more airflow through here. So your barrels aren't heat up as much and it's not gonna get so hot up here. As you can see, I have a Surefire scout mounted here at the three o'clock position on this Haley Strategic Thorntail mount. I've been using this mount for a very long time. It's a very crusty mount. I've used it on a wide variety of rifles, but it's still going strong here. And I also have a Surefire pressure pad with zip ties just securing it down. Now moving back here to the optic that I selected, I've had this optic for a very long time. This is an old Primary Arms SLX 3x Prism. And this is not actually meant for 308. This is a 762 by 39 reticle. And I was using this on an AK a long time ago. And what I like about these things is it's kind of like a poor man's ACOG. And I like it because it has this Picatinny rail on the top here so I can mount a little red dot. This is a US Optics uh, DRS 2.0 rifle uh, red dot. Um, I don't know, it's an open emitter. It works fine for me and I really like this thing because 
if I was using night vision, I can get behind this thing and passively aim with it. As you can see, it's also mounted on this Unity Tactical riser back here. And I like this riser because I actually just flipped it backwards. This is how I sort of mount my magnifiers a lot if I need to get a magnifier up higher. But I like this thing because I can get this optic further back just due to the eye relief on this thing. And I really like this optic because it is a little bit heavier than what is offered nowadays, like they're newer prisms, but this thing is just feels bomb proof to me. And even if the battery dies on it, I still have a visible ACSS reticle on here. And I just thought it fit the vibe for what I was going for when it came to a battle rifle. Now I know this particular optic is meant for 762 by 39, but to me, I haven't really noticed a huge deal about it. Um, as long as you know your holds, you'll be fine. And for me, this is the type of optic I would imagine to be mounted on a just a standard battle rifle that's not necessarily being pushed into an, uh, you know, a DMR roll, even though you can still use this thing to reach out because since I'm using 308, I wanted to use, you know, what this rifle is good for and reaching out. So a three by optic with a little red dot on the top here. So if I'm you know, up close or if I want a passive aim, I can still do that. Now moving back here to the stock. So I actually swapped this out for the stock that it came with. It came with its own stock, but I really like these Magpul stocks, especially since I already had a cheek riser for this thing. So it allows me to get my head position in the correct position when getting behind this optic. But one downside I have found to this riser right here is that if I have the stock in what is typically like my preferred position, which is one click from the furthest, I can't charge this all the way back that I need to. It gets caught on this little lip right here. So I'm either gonna have to find a different stock with a better cheek riser on it that doesn't go so, so far forward. But if I go all the way back, I have no issues. It still runs into the back, but I can still cycle it all the way back here. So that is a problem and it's something that I'm gonna swap out, but I'm definitely gonna still go with something that has a cheek riser on it so I can get a little bit higher up here, but this is my preferred uh, height when it comes to optics, so I'll figure something out. Now moving down here to the grip, this is actually the grip that comes with the rifle. This is just an ergo grip. I'm a huge fan of ergo grips. We've been using these things for a very long time. We've had them a ton in our arms room when I was at Ranger Battalion. So didn't swap that out, really like it. And the trigger on these rifles is also very nice as well. I'm not really sure what the poundage on that is, but it does feel like a really nice trigger. Definitely better than some type of mil spec trigger. All right guys, that's about it when it comes to the rifle. Let's talk about the kit selection for today. So again, I am fairly new to battle rifles, so I'm just using what I had on hand. And for the rig that I'm using, this is a Haley Strategic DC-3R Heavy. So this is their battle rifle rig. And as you can see on here, it holds four mags. So it's not like a super heavy, you know, Chad overt rig where it carries a bunch of mags on it. But when it comes to battle rifles, I think you, I think this is totally fine. And if I wanted to carry more ammo on me, uh, one thing I could do, especially with a rig like this, is I can match this rig with something like a belt kit. So if I wanted to use like my cry Crossfire DZ rig and load battle rifle mags in that, I could carry a bunch more ammo on my hips and that allows me to uh, disperse the weight a little bit versus having a bunch of battle rifle ammo up here on my chest, which would make me super lopsided. And on my back, you can see I have this really cool little backpack. This is a Wartech uh, Burkut, I think it's called. It's an ATAX FG. I've had this backpack for a very long time, a couple years now, and I've taken this thing out to pretty much every Milsom West I've ever been out to, and I use this thing for an assault pack. And I like this thing because it carries my water in it, whatever else I might need, and it really integrates well with a chest rig like this. Now the last piece of kit I want to show off to you guys, which is, this is not like a battle rifle specific piece of kit, but I just want to highlight it. It's this Gorka that you can see that I'm wearing right here. This is from Commando Store. This is their new Gorkas that they come out. They have a couple different uh, patterns, but I decided to go with the Ranger Green one. And I wear this thing all the time when I'm out here on my property, doing stuff out here. And it's really good for tromping around in the woods. I also have pants that go along with this thing. And I'll just throw those things on. And this is what I'll wear when I'm going out here hunting, burning trash, whatever. But I really like this thing and it's just a comfortable sort of oversuit. So you can actually wear this over other uniforms if you wanted to. Right now I just have a t-shirt very similar to the Spectre top that I have, which is what I typically wear at Milsom West. But as far as like a good field jacket, this thing's pretty badass. Well guys, that's about it. This is like my beginner battle rifle setup. Um, again, I am just now getting into the world of battle rifles. This is not gonna be the last battle rifle that's gonna be on this channel, hopefully. Um, but I think it is a good start since it is an AR-15 style rifle. 
which is you know something I'm very familiar with, have lots of training on ARs and M4s and stuff like that. So I think as it comes to battle rifles here in the United States, picking up something like this is you know not a bad choice. Um, it is still an AR-15, so a lot of people out here here in the United States will be very familiar how to operate this thing, and uh, I don't think it would go wrong. The price on it, I think, is fairly uh, fairly priced. It comes in around. $1,600, something around like that. So it's not a cheap rifle, but you know, it's not super, super expensive. And for a 308 rifle that's gonna be reliable, I think it's a pretty good deal. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider dropping a like and subscribing. You can also follow me on Instagram at bluejeanoperator or go to my website, thebluejeanoperator.com to find school shirts and merch, which helps out the channel. Also guys, if you wanna get involved with the channel more directly, I got Patreon, helps me buy guns, gear, ammo, all the kind of stuff that goes around in a gun channel, and it'll get you access to videos a little bit earlier than everyone else. But hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time.